All right, let's do this. <sighs> That's what you did last time I said, let's do this. You're like, ah. Oh. It's actually in the audio recording. <laughs> you you push the button. You're like, okay, let's click. <laughs> Okay, that's, that's up. Let's do this. <laughs> that's not exactly how it happened. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode beta 76 for Friday, the 15th of April 2016. This is a show where two lifelong friends talk about geek stuff and whatever else comes to mind. I'm Amos, and that dude right there with the fuzzy head, that's Kent. Hey, what's going on? You loser. It's your long hair and your shitty beard. Retirement uh, asshole. Punk. Don't hate. All kinds of other things I can say say to you right now. Jerk. Motherfucker still has hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah kind of. <laughs> like the like back half of my head. <laughs> All right. Hey, man, you've got company tonight. I do. You do. In studio. Even. In studio. Hello, I'm his son. Um, yeah. Uh, this is Lucas, aka Movie Man Lucas from the chat. Ah. Oh, we finally get to put a, a face to the to the chat. Yeah, and I I'm I'm a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> Pre-show he was talking about all of my gray hair and I said, "Well, yeah, you've been around almost two decades now, so of course I've got a lot of gray hair." Mm. And grow a Sasquatch. Face. So you, you're you're trying to say that he is responsible for the gray hairs on your head? Yeah, he's responsible for a little over half of them, probably oh. about six percent of them. No, yeah. like forty. Isaac says sixty. <laughs> You've been around a lot longer than him, though. Yeah, but he does more damage. He's, he's more effective in his time, apparently. <laughs> so maybe it is closer to fifty-fifty. Oh man! So how you guys been this week, dude? You remember last show? I said. Gosh, I was doing great until about 30 minutes ago, and I think I'm coming down with something. Mm. Yeah, it fucking hit me, dude. I was tore up all Saturday, half of Sunday. I was fine Monday. Tuesday, it hits me again. I was, dude, it was, it was awful. Yesterday, it was so bad, I time traveled. Time traveled? Time travel. Like, so I, like, I like you sneezed at 88 miles an hour? What's going on here? I, that might be what happened. <laughs> I... I came home from work. I lay down on the bed just to, you know, maybe maybe catch a, a couple of winks before supper or whatever. And then I was getting ready for work mm. for today. Mm. Yeah, hey, I fell asleep right like right after work. I, did, I was home not even an hour. Fell asleep, and then I was waking up to my alarm to get ready for work. That's pretty sweet. No, no. So, so that's like that's like a whole day just. Disapproved. Yeah, it was awful. That's awesome. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Yeah. No, I I went to work for a full day, got about an hour off, and then I went to work again for a full day. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> it's because your body misses being in the military. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's not what it was. It's <laughs> bullshit. Uh, how about you, Lucas? How was your uh, How was your week? Uh, well, this is the first week since spring break. And I'm sorry. Yeah, well, life sucks again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's Friday, so I could stay up and not regret it. Oh, and not regret it. Not, not that he normally can stay up. It's just <laughs> less right. painful in yeah. the morning yeah. or in the <laughs> noon. <laughs> All right. Um, I spent a considerable part of this week planning my trip for uh, my move, actually. Breaking down gas stops and trying to figure out exact mileage and everything else between towns and all that stuff. Is that coming up really soon? Um, yeah, like 70 days. Holy No, 50, 50 days. I've, oh. got, I've, got, I've got 34 days left in this country and then about that's... 20 days uh, at home and traveling. Dude, that is, that's really cool. Yeah, I'm psyched. It feels like you've been there for like three years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're telling me. Holy shit. I'm so ready not to be here anymore. And nothing against the country. Nothing against the country at all. Um, simply a lot of things against my presence here. Right. So, right. Is there um, anything that you're going to do before you leave? Uh, I still haven't made it down to Kunsan to go to Hooch Hopping yet. I was going to go this weekend, and then my, my uh, battle buddy that I was going to go with backed out. The hotel filled up, and then they tagged me with weekend duty. So 
Um, this weekend didn't really work out, but I've got uh, about six, five, five weekends left to try to make that happen. So, um, you know, I, I didn't make it happen for the last 47. I guess I'll try for those last five. <laughs> Good luck to you, sir. Yeah, but other than that, I mean, I've 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 been back to Seoul and and uh, done some sightseeing and things like that. I'm just ready to go. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Ready to not to be here anymore. Hey, man. Uh, apparently, we did some uh, some geeky things this week. What you got with this uh, digital copy? What's this about? Yeah. So, you know how when you buy a, a Blu-ray multi pack or whatever, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. one of the things on there is a digital copy, right? Have you, have you ever? claimed one of those uh, all the ever... time yeah see yeah, I, I, i've got a huge I... digital library just by the dvds that people have bought <laughs> <laughs> oh, amazing yes okay <laughs> for whatever reason i just never bothered really to do just never like well, eh, well i don't know and i decided to do all of them this week mm. So, very- so which service pisses you off more? iTunes, Vudu, Flixster. Uh, what was the other one? Well, Flixster is is now who owns the. the, the, the yep. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, the, uh, when I had that giant stack of shit that I said I'm going to save U- for later. Ultraviolet. Ultraviolet. Mm. So Flixster owns Ultraviolet now. Well, fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> I have yeah. found that Voodoo, Ultraviolet, and Flixster worked pretty much interoperable anyway. So once you registered on one, it just worked on all three of them. Mm. Okay. Well, maybe I'll revisit because I just I, I tried one of them with the with the Flixster thing. Mm-hmm. I was like, you know what? This is just this is just dumb. So I took the entire stack that only had Ultraviolet and just put it back <laughs> on this. <laughs> so I've got I've got a bunch of of movies right now on on Apple. On iTunes, yeah, yeah. So the the rest of them, I was just like, eh. I, yeah. I I claim it as much as I can. I claim the Apple one first. Like sometimes it'll give you a code that's good for one or the other, and I claim right. it on Apple first because we are an Apple family, um, yep. with Apple TVs and the phones and iPads and everything else. So, um, but yeah, we probably got maybe seventy movies or so. Mm. So, when did you like twenty? I I claimed twenty six. Twenty six fix this week yeah but there's still stacks that that don't work with apple so i was like uh, okay maybe you, maybe you know uh, the ones that work with apple you can actually do the little redeem thing and use the camera on your phone or your computer and it'll just automatically type it in for you oh is that right yeah yeah it makes it super simple okay so uh, there's that now, now now that you've done all the work that you need to do there's a way that you could have done it easier does star wars have uh, yeah so yeah i haven't claimed my star wars one yet but yes yes mm. it has one um, so, uh, so this week I created a feed for Justin Robert Young. He mentioned on Daily Tech News Show on, on Thursday that they, that he needed a feed just for all his shows. So I made one and, uh, that was pretty cool. Uh, that actually was a bit of a learning experience and all well, very frustrating. So, um, yeah, yeah, very nice. frustrating. There, there needs to be better, uh, RSS aggregators and there's plenty out there to, to aggregate RSS feeds, but to actually filter the results. Uh, using keywords, that does that is not the easiest freaking thing. I found one service that does it, and it does it really awkwardly. So I had to finagle it for a while to get it to work right. So nice. how how long did that project take you? Like in man hours, not like I well I started it then this time and then ended no, it, it was it was a straight shot. It took me about three hours. Okay, oh, okay, that's not that's not terrible. Yeah, three three hours of that, that's all I did for that three hours. I wasn't watching videos or anything else. It was just that, and it was. And of course, it was at the end of the workday, so was, you know, twice as irritating as it should have been. But <laughs> um, and the other thing I did after uh, after a story we're, we're going to cover a little bit later, I decided to check on uh, old EverQuest and see how that was working out. <laughs> and I actually got it working. Yeah, I got it working on a on a hacked server and had a little fun and realized that I really, really, really loved being higher level. In EverQuest, <laughs> because uh, stabbing a spider with a with a knife and dying fifteen times was not fun. So yeah. I played that for about three hours, and I got to level three. And uh, yeah, yeah, no, no, I I, I much prefer my my level seventy five uh, 
necromancer with you know the pets i could send out and just demolish everything that i was going at and everything else so much easier when you actually have some survivability yeah no doubt is is there still an official server for for everquest uh i think there is it's free to play and then you can it's a it's freemium like you it has some basic classes that you can play and then if you want to play other classes or uh do different things you have to pay additional for it but yeah it's it's still out there it still exists it's still a thing yeah i heard but only only for windows though they killed the mac client a long time ago which is actually part of the problem i had to wineskin the mac client over to even use the damn thing and that that itself was a whole fucking charade like that's that's a multi-step process that should be a lot easier damn now see i i'd heard well it's been many months now but within the last year that they're talking about coming out with a new EverQuest game. That's supposed to be like a more, like even more immersive experience, like where your characters age and stuff like that. I've- so what I'm what I'm finding is my ex- my positive experience in EverQuest was based on the people that I gilded with and ah, raided sure. with, and a lot of the the fun that we had and everything else was based on the conversations and the teamwork and things like that that were in the game. And it, at the time, it was a great escape from a marriage I didn't want to be in. So um, th- those things all, all add into me being a, a hardcore EQ player, which you kind of had to be in order to get to the higher echelon stuff. You really had to be pretty dedica- dedicated to the game, which is why I flipped and turned into a uh, avid WoW player because I can pick up WoW and just play it for a while and put it down. I don't have to, like, there's no dedication to it. It's just a, it's just a fun game. It's not a, nearly as serious as... EverQuest was at least in my opinion so um that's that's one of the reasons i went over to wow and i enjoyed that so it, at first when wow first came out i didn't really like it i was in the beta and everything else and didn't really care for it because it, it was too cartoony is too blah 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 you know just like little kid version and now that's exactly what i like about it it's just it's not a dedicated time space it's just happens you go in you play and you log the hell off right so, so. luke you played wow recently yeah i played for the free trial mm. that was that was interesting uh, i i figured that i i, I just it's not my type of game I, yeah i don't really like mmos but i did get uh a hearthstone skin from it so yeah, which was the <laughs> entire reason like, <laughs> you had to get to what uh, level level 20 level 20 right yeah. that's pretty yeah, easy now yeah so. I, I played for like two days and i'm like yeah okay i got it yeah and, a warlock and used pets and stuff. Yeah, that's actually what I preferred playing in in, uh, in WoW as well as Warlock. Just so much fun. So, what about you, uh, Lucas? Other than playing WoW specifically to get your Hearthstone up, is there anything else geeky that you did this week? Um, today I bought a a Hearthstone skin for five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it. It's microtransactions yeah yep yep it's a new mage skin that is uh, an ios exclusive hmm. it's for a limited time and all the the proceeds go to wwf which is to save the world not not the wrestlers yeah no no no, no not the not, it's actually, the, there's a lot of apps right now on on the app store that are advertising wwf thing it's like a, a wildlife month or something i don't know where d- Either all of the proceeds or a portion of the proceeds go to WWF. Nice. It's so, interesting, but yeah, that was that was part of that bigger promotion. So, um, so this week we both did something. Well, I guess apparently all three of us did something that we haven't done in a while. So, uh, Lucas, you being the guest, why don't you go first? Tell us about uh, the TED Talk that you watched or listened to. Yep, so I listened to a a TED Talk from Caleb Harper, and it was about how computers will grow your food in the future. Mm -hmm. And it was talking about how we can make plants, like we can control the amount of CO2 and the oxygen and the nutrients and keep track of all the stuff that can go with it. Uh, in just our houses and talk like you could be just a normal businessman and have your own like garden in your house. And I don't know. It was just, so is is this like, um, 
kind of like a robot controlled irrigation and and that sort of thing yeah yeah, it was very like you can control the humidity and just everything about that it's been put into schools mainly in california Hmm. and so this is already a, a a thing that's basically just waiting to gain traction yeah it's been it's been a thing for like two or three years from oh, okay. what the guy said hmm. and it's making it bigger and trying to make it more mobile and and, and see you you say that but all i hear is hydroponic marijuana <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah <laughs> uh, so you can, there are different recipes that you can use to yeah i'm sure there is <laughs> I can make things, <laughs> things seem like they come from a different place. Like uh, an apple from Mexico might taste different from one from Germany, for mm. example. Okay, okay. So you're like, oh, yeah, just nothing nothing beats Mexican apples. So and, you, you can match the humidity and soil type. and. Mm. Are, are they yeah. going to bring back the original banana? That's all I want. I just want the original banana that actually tastes like the banana candy <laughs> to come back from extinction because we're a bunch <laughs> of asshole humans that don't know how to do shit. That's yeah, all I want. Sure. Uh, the, the guy talked about how he ate tomatoes as no one no one has eaten for like generations. Hmm. And that's like super cool. Like I, yeah, I yeah. I really dig that. First this, then then Jurassic Park. <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah. That's that's yeah. coming up next. All right. What about you, Kent? Latif Nasser, you have no idea where camels really came from. Well, you, you're right. I I, I actually. <laughs> I really fucking don't. I have no idea where camels came from. Yeah. Do you want to take a guess? Like what what um, continent? What continent? I'm going to say Antarctica. I'm going to guess Australia. Mm. Mm. You're both wrong. Um, oh, is, yeah. is India its own continent? No. Damn near. Yeah. It's damn near. But no. Mm. No, it's actually, mm. it's actually North America. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> Science. <laughs> So this this woman found bone fragments in the far north Canadian tundra. So like way north of the Arctic Circle, she was climbing these mountains and things, and she found some bone fragments. She's a uh, paleoarchaeologist, I think. Okay, sounds good. Or paleobiologist or something. Paleo something or another. Paleo science person. And it, so she was looking for any sort of fossils or anything that she could find. And she found these bone fragments that she actually thought was like wood fragments or something at first. Because okay. typically what they find up there is, is like plant fossils. Hmm. So she thought she found like some preserved bark or something like that. Well, she collected them and then realized that, well, it's not a plant. So what is this? It turns out to be bone. And the more she analyzed it, she eventually figures out that it belonged to a camel, but a very large camel that was probably about nine feet tall. Damn. Yeah, and weighed about a ton. <laughs> and, well, it it's this whole thing that basically at, at the end of it, it's it we discovered that there are all kinds of extinct camels that we've never heard of before, like rabbit-sized camels, and camels that have long necks like giraffes and all kinds of crap. And it was really the thing that I got out of this more than the, the whole camel thing was that I didn't like the way that the TED talk was structured. <laughs> <laughs> this, this talk was about this woman finding all of this stuff, right? But there's a dude standing on stage and he's giving the talk. Now, the dude, I have not, not a single problem with the guy because he was a very engaging speaker. He was actually, he had a voice that I could listen to for a while. Mm -hmm. Good speaker, really good speaker. However, the woman was like, she pre-recorded part of this. So he would be talking and then the, the recording would respond or, you know, say something or whatever. And then he would continue. And it was like, he was having a conversation with a pre-recorded message. Now, was this a, an official TED or was it a TEDx? It was TED. It was TED. It was, he was definitely on a, <laughs> on a TED stage. Wow. And it was, it was really strange the way it was set up. But it was, it was kind of neat because at the very end of the talk, he actually brought a, a real camel onto the stage. Hmm. I, I don't know. A little it, show it, and tell? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of lukewarm on the talk. The talk itself was actually pretty interesting. In, okay. case you for, 
the camel looked like, right? Yeah. <laughs> show it, you, it, now that I've talked about it for 20 minutes, let me show you what it looked like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what did you um, watch, Abe? Eddie Zong. Um, his talk is called How School Makes Kids Less Intelligent. And essentially, I really summarize it in just saying that um, sticking to the norms kills creativity and imagination. And the kids that are doing really well in school, all through school, for the purpose of finishing school, are losing out. They're losing part of the out-of-the-box thinking that, that uh, we need in order to really succeed. And people that do think outside the box and, and, and don't subscribe to the typical scholarly model have sometimes a better chance at doing amazing things than those who just gather the academic intelligence. Sure. So I, w- w- would I recommend watching it? Sure. Why not? It's only eight minutes long. I mean, it's done by like a 16 year old, which is fairly impressive. So there you go. I bet he's not doing well in school. <laughs> uh, probably. Well, I, I don't know. I, he didn't even mention it. He said he was the only Asian kid in the world that didn't understand math. So, <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, actually, I, I know a couple, so he's lying. So there you go. Um, is he true Asian? Do what? Is he true Asian? Uh, I have no idea. Oh. <laughs> it really matters. A yeah. hundred different jokes could come to mind right now, and I'm just going to leave those there because none of them are appropriate for uh, mixed audiences. So that would be <laughs> our TED Talks for the week right there. <laughs> What? What? When you played the music, there was a your voice did this amazing <laughs> echo effect thing. Oh yeah, so cool. Awesome. That's because my voice is just that fucking cool. <laughs> so, uh, so we alluded to it earlier, but Lucas, you brought in that uh, Nos is down. Yeah, if you don't know what that is, it's a uh, short for Nostalarius, which is a uh, used to be a vanilla WoW server, which had a lot of people. It had 150,000 active accounts that played on there and the most it had at one time was 18,000 so a lot a lot of people that's and pretty uh, it's actually pretty insane yeah now then this is an unofficial server this is right. not run by blizzard right yeah, this, so this is a, a homebrew this is something somebody built in their garage and, and hosted and hacked the code to where people could play on there and uh play without without going through blizzard at all Right, right. And it's vanilla, so like er- everything before uh, the first major expansion. The Burning Crusade. On. Yeah, Burning Crusade. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this is this is the base game, fully patched and and current as possible before the first expansion came out. And um, yeah, it, it, I played it, and that was actually a really fun game. There's a lot of a lot of complexities in in later later uh, expansions that weren't in play yet, um, such as. Uh, well, I mean, different things like you didn't, you couldn't just teleport to places or, or, you know, ride airships and shit like that. You actually had to like run where you wanted to go for the most part. Um, which in a real world situation, re running across three zones is, you know, like half an hour. <laughs> and then you get there to realize that the people that were waiting for you aren't there anymore. They've already gone, you know? And it's like, there, there are a lot of complications in that game that made it just a, a, a purest, uh, fantasy land really. Mm. But it's been shut down. Lizard uh, gave them a cease and desist order, and they shut down, I believe, on the 10th of April, the 12th of April. I think the 12th of April. Either way. It's like a week ago. Or now, how long so. has this server been in place? Um, a couple of years. It's not the oldest server, but it is the it purportedly the biggest and most active um, unofficial server. So I have to assume that Blizzard knew of its existence for the last years right which is one of the things that brings up questions like why are they doing this now why only this one server why not other competing servers you know and there there's literally dozens of other unofficial servers out there and why why tackle this one why now and part of that might be that uh this one's in a place with this one i believe was hosted in the u.s so they could easily shut it down as opposed to others that are uh hosted in like new zealand and and uh things like that um, also part of the rumor is that if they're going to shut this one down, maybe they're trying to build a market for a service they are going to start. That's mm-hmm. yeah, that which would is, be, which is what EverQuest did before, you know, when EverQuest started declining, they had progression servers. So you would log into that server and it was, 
the basic game until you beat until someone had beat the main boss which then unlocked the next expansion until someone beat that boss which then unlocked the next expansion and they they did that for a while too so on, on part of it that'd be great that'd be fun everything else but then that might also be an indication of the death of wow in a in some small way because that's again that is exactly what everquest did on as this began to fade mm. Hmm. Possibly EverQuest sequel to take over WoW. <laughs> so, well, what do you think about that? Do you do you think WoW is in a decline or? Well, it is in a decline. Every time they get uh, new subscriptions, any listener to the instance can tell you. Anytime they get new a uh, new expansion, it jumps back up to about twelve million active monthly users, and then within about six months or so, it drops back down to about eight. And the last time I heard, it had dipped as low as into the six millions. But six million people paying fifteen bucks a month is still. Uh, yeah. still a pretty good still i mean quite lucrative yeah and uh and you know they've got a lot of other games everything else going on over there at blizzard so it's not like they're losing fan base it's just a matter of moving the players around to where they feel more at home i think but i don't know i mean it's it's a crazy world we got new shit coming out all the time and everything else and wow is coming up on 11 years old so yeah it's been yeah. around for a while and, and there's not an mmo out there that even that even comes no near the there isn't an mmo out there that has that comes anywhere near what wow has done at, the, at its lowest point right you know everquest yeah. at its peak had like four hundred thousand users active monthly users or something like that i mean it was you know i don't even think it ever hit a million it might have i don't know but it was nowhere near even close to what wow has been doing yeah hmm. so all right so i imagine wow is going to be around for a while so i don't i don't think I don't think this is an early indicator of the the going away of World of Warcraft. Right. It'll it'll be interesting to see how it works out, though. I do think that they might start doing legacy servers, which only has vanilla or Burning Crusade or Wrath of the Lich King or whatever Mm -hmm. you want. Yeah, and even if they give it away for free with, like, you know, incentives to upgrade to a paid account, I could totally see that because they're they I mean it's proven that there is a market out there for vanilla servers. So I yeah. I mm. I definitely think that, that Blizzard's at least looking into doing that. Yeah. Um my my thing would be what would capture me is if you um if you were on a vanilla if they opened up a vanilla server and made it a progression server to where it would gradually grow, but any time that you went from like say you, you get to the end of, of uh vanilla wow which I'm not even sure what the end boss would be for that. Um, hmm. Anyway, um, get to that, and then you beat it. You and your guild or whatever else, like the people that have beat it, can choose to go ahead and progress to the next server or stay on stay on vanilla, you mm-hmm. know? And then once you, you know, uh, Burning Crusade and then the Wrath of the Lich King, once you beat the Lich King, then you can progress up to Cataclysm and make it like that, but keep the old ones still active. I don't know how much overhead that would be and how much uh, server maintenance and everything else that would that would cause, but I think that would be really awesome. And that actually might be worth me getting back into it and paying my 15 bucks again. Of course, if they just came up with a family plan so me and my son could play, me and my son and my kids could play for, you know, a, instead of paying 30 bucks a month for two people, if we could pay 30 a month for five people, that'd make it worth my while too. You know what I mean? Something like that. Because we're not, we're not all playing all the time, but when we do play, we all want to play together. So right, I right. think there's plenty of options left that Blizzard needs to explore. Or maybe they have, and they just decided it's not worth it. But I think there's plenty left for Blizzard to explore in the world of WoW. Mm-hmm. In the world, world of World of Warcraft. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, all right. Uh, something that I came across this week, a little email that I got in my inbox, and I thought it was very interesting. Um, something I didn't even realize wasn't there. Same-sex spouses are now eligible to accompany their um, military, uh, 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 not dependent, yeah. the spou- uh, the their their, their active duty sponsor, um, to go to over certain overseas assignments, accompanied, such as Korea. And now was was that not the case before? Like, it, w- uh, it was not. It was not. So, so wow. essentially, back in uh, back in two thousand thirteen. The military officially recognized same-sex marriages, and the the spouses got the same benefits as, as opposite sex, you know, your traditional marriage or whatever. Um, but 
when you go to go overseas, there are things called SOFA agreements, well, status of forces agreements that dictate certain things like how long a, a, a active duty member can stay in the government or and stay in the country. Uh, Guard reserve are separate on that. Um, then you have uh, non-military civilian uh, employees of the military and the rules that govern them. It also governs like if who if you go to jail, who handles it. You know what kind of what kind of laws are in place for that. The whole process for that kind of thing, and it covers your dependents, to include your spouse, your children, all that kind of stuff. Well, it's hard to get a country that doesn't recognize same sex marriage to admit a same-sex spouse into their country under the same rules as the traditional marriage model. Sure. So, um, and apparently there were certain countries that, would, that allowed it right away, didn't care. Korea just allowed it, and I don't know who else did, but apparently the countries that are now, that now have issues with it are primarily in the Middle East in countries that have uh, laws against homosexuality. So... Right. So is Korea one of the countries that that does recognize same-sex marriages? I don't believe they do. Hmm. I do okay. not believe they do. They, but they Plus, but they allow the US military to bring their the, the same-sex spouses uh under the the same sofa that everybody else is under. I wonder if that's because of like I guess progressive public opinion or if that's the United States just exerting their power. I don't know. I don't. Could, I, I honestly don't know because around here there seem to be, I don't want to say a lot because uh, th- there seems to be a higher than normal percentage of homosexuals here in this area as far as military members. And I don't know if that's because there's fewer civilians around, so I'm paying more attention to the military, or if there's uh, a drive for uh, gay military members to come to Korea because it's not in the same environment as anywhere else. I don't know. Like, there could be a multitude of factors in that between my perception and a possible reality of it. But it's pretty prevalent. Like you don't have to throw very many stones before you, you, you know, wrestle a bush. So, <laughs> so to speak. Um, so, <laughs> so, but have you, have you actually had a conversation with a married homosexual in in korea not in korea i did have one back in in texas in my in my shop in texas um the well things were a little bit different there here's more of a maintainer personality you know mentality so i i'm not sure that any yeah that's about all i can Hmm. say about that um so Uh, i no i get it i i just uh, i'm just wondering uh, from a married because you you've obviously spoke to several uh, single homosexuals. Mm-hmm. I'm just curious what the perspective would be of a married person that's that's there unaccompanied. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't even, I don't even know. Like, I I, I don't think any of the uh, any of the the gay people that I know here are married, especially not married to someone in country. Because if you do bring them to Korea and they're not under the sofa and they're not you know uh, officially recognized or whatever else, uh, not officially recognized, but if they're not uh, command sponsored, is what they call it, then you basically have to pay out of pocket for everything. You, you, you don't get a. I mean, you get a you get a, a room on base, but you, you your spouse can't live there with you. So right. So they have you have to live off base, out of your on your own without government compensation or anything else. So it's pretty expensive. I I haven't run into anybody that's actually doing it this time. And around. just to clarify, so that nobody's confused, that's that's not a a rule for same sex that's that's just for anyone right if like, if you if, come if, and you're not it, command sponsored then you're paying out of pocket for your spouse to be here right just like when we were at Kunsan Kunsan's not an accompanied base so we're we don't we don't get paid to bring our our families with us right that's not to say that South Korea won't allow your family to come in you you absolutely can yes but it's under the same uh, tourist uh tourist visas and everything else it's like you know the same rules as just anybody that just Joe Schmo coming to Korea to visit for uh, Seoul for a month. Sure. So, um, but yeah, I, I thought that was really interesting. That's a, that's a big step forward. I would think, um, yeah, now absolutely. I'm, I'm not a proponent for having dependents here in Korea to begin with. Yep, um, same, same. but if they're going to, if you're going to allow them, then I'm all about allowing all of them equally. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, 
And that's something I didn't even know. I didn't even know that was an issue. I, I, I didn't either until until I saw the email. It was like, hey, guess what? They're allowed now. I'm like, or they're allowed. They're, they can be command sponsored now. I was like, oh, I didn't know they weren't. <laughs> right. I I might need to be. I need to, might need to brush up on my military LGBT uh, yeah, rules. Right. You know, shit. So there was that. Luke, so, Lucas, you got anything on that with your experience in uh, serving, being overseas as a dependent? No, I'm pretty good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no comment. No comment. <laughs> um, I, I haven't had to deal with paying for anything with, with that sort of stuff. It's like, yeah, I'm overseas. <laughs> There's some foreign people I have to like speak their language. Yeah, but I, yeah. I don't think you ever learn more than three words of the the native language of any country you've been in. Yeah. Yes, no, and thank you. That's all you need. Yep, more or less. Yeah. Th- those are the three words that you really <laughs> that and maybe bathroom, but usually you can just follow the smell. <laughs> um, so uh, so I was browsing around and th- speaking about uh, you know spouses and 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 dependents and things like that. I was looking around at a few things for um, for the kids and you know different. Uh, just parenting stuff, but I came across this site. I came across WebMD, and I'm going to click over for people to actually see this um, uh, this atrocious, atrocious site. So here we go. Now my problem with WebMD, I've gone here several times in the in the past, and they they have good medical advice. I mean, I'm not saying it's their doctors or anything else, but it's it's fairly good medical advice. But when you look at this page and there are pop-ups everywhere, there are advertisements everywhere and the advertisements are in right in line with the content. There's really no major uh, differences between them. It's really easy to get confused on what's content and what's advertisements. This is atrocious. And what really gets me is when I see a website like this, I realized today when I was looking at this, that having a website with such poor ad management, it undermines my, 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 my care for the site and for the information. It, it, it subverts my thoughts on the, the authority of the website, especially when it is a, a, you know, a medical website, something like that. Now all of a sudden I'm thinking, oh, this is just some shitty site that somebody threw together and is trying to sell a bunch of ads on. It really detracts from the content. Yeah, okay, so a couple thoughts. Uh, one, WebMD, I've been going to, well, not been going, I used to go to WebMD fairly often, years ago. And yeah, what a useful site. And it was pretty streamlined. It was a clean website. Looking at this now, and I, I don't know how long it's been since I've been to WebMD, but it's been right. quite some time. This is, this is nasty. <laughs> there is more advertising than there is actual content on this page. And, and, the, in- and the content itself is not organized in a in an aesthetic and easy to follow way. No, there's ads in the banner. There's three columns here, and all three columns have ads mm-hmm. scattered throughout. There's even at the bottom, health solutions from our sponsor. <laughs> this is bullshit. This is a medical. Yeah, granted, this is not a substitute for doctor or anything like that. But typically, when I would come here, is when the kids were little, and they would, you know, I would notice a rash, or I would notice. You know, something right. was going on with the kids. I'd go to WebMD real quick just to, you know, go to the, the symptom checker, just see what's going on. Well, now I come here. I've got, you know, I'm kind of freaking out about my kid. And I want to know what, I, what I'm supposed to do. And should I go to the doctor? Uh, What the fuck is this? What do I mm. click on here? Do I? Oh, shit. Where's the? Oh, damn it. I just oh, pop up again. Like, yep. really? You just destroyed the functionality of this once right. brilliant site. And I understand completely the need for adver- advertising and the need to, um, to you know, monetarily uh, uh, gain from your website. I mean, that's why you're doing it. Nobody's doing this shit for free. So, sure. You know, everybody's doing. Everybody's pushing for something, right? But but to, it's exactly like you said. There is no differentiation. They they've got the the same font, same font colors. <laughs> yep. It's yeah. like they trick you into clicking the wrong thing. <laughs> like instead of clicking on the thing that that's going to help you or your family, ah, oh, we just made five more cents. Yeah, 
Fuck you. you know what J- Jimmy John about? Boy. Jimmy John Boy says, um, "Oh, you know what? Let me download ta- Roll the Tanks and play a quick, quick game. You know, especially while I'm trying to figure out what that rash is on my kid's butt. You know, <laughs> is that a spider bite or a or a, a, a parasite infestation? Oh, wait. Game, uh, uh, roll the Tanks. Oh, there we go. You know what this reminds me of? When's the last time you've been to Weather.com? Um, it's been a while. Yeah, go to that site, and it's the same damn thing. There is more bullshit content on weather.com now when you just want to find out what the fuck the temperature is supposed to be tomorrow. <laughs> not as not as atrocious as WebMD, because, mm-hmm. I mean, really because, I mean, finding out what tomorrow's weather is going to be is not important as figuring out, you know, if this rash is going to kill your kid. Oh, this isn't covered in ads, but the the, the layout of it is definitely not... Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, it's definitely not, not, not helpful. It's not as bad, but there are ads spread throughout. And there's also, weather.com took it upon themselves to put a lot of bullshit content in here as well. Like, mm. fishermen baffled by strange catch. It has nothing to do with, with meteorology. Yeah. You know, it's just a lot of, like, weird... Clickbait. Yeah, yeah clickbait The internet is now just clickbait. Here. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Bait. And, and title. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Excellent. So I don't know, Luke. What do you what do you think about website? Is this is this a persistent problem in useful websites to to be filled up with crap? Or I don't know. What what's your experience with that? Well, as a advent user of the internet, uh, <laughs> it's, it's a lot easier just to filter out the the ads because you see it everywhere. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But when looking at that the web indie mm-hmm. uh, website, it, it was right there, like. Like you'd be hovering over the the links to how to fix your your kid's rash, and then all of a sudden you're clicking on the world of tanks. <laughs> yeah. Like there, there's no separation, there's no color scheme or what, anything like that. There's. Just, we've, yeah. I, we've I, gone from opposite extremes. Back when I was first on the web, it was basically text, maybe a couple, uh, you know, gifs or or a little picture here or there, or something like that, you know. But it's really just mostly text. And then we went through this great period of holy shit, look at all this functionality. And now we're going into this, okay, we've got the functionality down. Let's corrupt it with a bunch of shitty advertisement. And it's, it's kind of coming full circle to where I'm using the, the web. I'm, my, the plethora of pages that I once viewed on a regular basis is now scaling back down because of the difficulties in viewing the pages and the quality of the content I'm getting from them. Do you, Amos, do you find that, that you use web apps or, or uh, I'm sorry, like uh, smartphone apps more than... Oh yeah, oh yeah. Clearly, if I if I can if I can get the information from a clean uh, app on my phone, I'm going there. I'm not doing this this other crap. Yeah, whenever I go on Safari, just I I can't use it because there's so many ads that that's just popping up on the screen and it's so hard to just move past it and it's like right in your face. And- yeah. So I just brought up my WebMD app, mm-hmm. and it's still very functional. There is. There is one ad in the middle here that's a, but it's it's kind of a relevant ad. Mm-hmm. It's, it's by Walgreens and it's a it's a tool that lets you refill your prescriptions. Okay. So, but it's very obvious. It's got the Walgreens logo and all of that. And then there's a there's a single ad on the the lower banner. Okay. On your on your list of of functions, mm-hmm. and that's it. It's still a very useful tool. So yeah. It, it, Recommendation to anyone out there: If you have the app version of WebMD, use that. Do <laughs> not use that shitty website. It's garbage. Awesome. This is an interesting point because whenever I go to official websites for very nerdy things, like if you go to StarWars.com or Lord of the Rings.com or whatever, I always find it so atrocious. But then you go to the fan-made websites; it, it's just you get your information so much easier. Yeah, I tend to go to wikis for stuff like that. So. Like instead of going to StarWars.com to see you know who that third bounty hunter on the left is, I'll go to Wikipedia. You know, it's the the Wikia site for Star Wars, and yeah, it's a lot less crap to wade through, and it's usually the content is way richer than what you're going to find on any official site. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Okay, so um, so next up, uh, one last thing here. Well, almost last thing. I saw a video that I thought was just amazing. And it's not even that spectacular of a video, but 
just the concept of it and the fact that during the evening when I was like, ugh, I don't want to be here at work, I saw this video and it just lightened my mood completely up. I figured it was worth sharing. So I'm going to cut over to that real quick. And uh, we're going to play just a, just a little bit of this. Do you hear a ringing in the background? Like a... Yeah, there's some kind of... Some kind of buzz. See the replay? You are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't do it. <laughs> so that is from the uh, Vlog Brothers. It's a video of a bunch of people in California when they're when they're doing a VidCon, I think. That uh, basically they're trying to they're trying to laugh without uh, without smiling, and none of them can really do it. Um, either they start out smiling and they just laugh without moving their mouth or they start laughing and then the smile comes. And what I found was when I was watching this video, I started smiling and then about by the end of the video, I was laughing right along with them, even though I had no intention on doing so. Um, right. so I figured I'd play that and get your thoughts on, on things like that, man. These little, little, uh, happiness share videos. Now I know you're not an, a, a huge fan of vlog brothers because of the smash cuts, but yeah, but I'd, well, and that's just a taste thing. I, I think they're great. They do really great stuff. It's just, yeah, they need to get rid of the smash cut. Um, but no, the, and this is something, you know, laughter is infectious. Smiles are infectious. And it's particularly the case whenever you have videos like this, just like a compilation of people laughing, smiling, having a good time. You can't help but share their joy. Mm -hmm. But this is something that I, I, I noticed just in everyday life. If you've got somebody that you know is typically grumpy or or whatever, but whenever you pass them, like you pass them five times during the day, you know through the hallway or whatever, if you smile at them every time you see them and you know a friendly greeting or something like that, they're likely to to give you a smile. At least in that moment, they're not the the grumpy ass that they're known to be. <laughs> you know, and that's right. just something to notice. I mean, it's if you're nice to people, they're going to be nice back, typically. If you laugh with them, they're going to laugh. They're, you know, if you smile at them, they're going to smile back. And that's just something that I, I think that's a universal human thing. Yep. Uh, go ahead. Don't take it to extremes, though, because, like, if you're just, <laughs> you're just Mr. <laughs> happy, happy, uh, you're going to get more hate and anger. Hi-ho you there, neighbor. How are you doing today? <laughs> it's all of a sudden you're the creepy guy down the hall. <laughs> <laughs> right. You like butterflies. I like butterflies. Let's let's, let's be friends. Zippity doo dah. <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so wrong. So very very wrong. Um, yeah, I, I thought it was, I thought it was really cool, and uh, I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I, I think things like that are awesome. So. Yeah, that's you know as long as it's not overdone. If it's like a two minute video, I'm so down for that. But I'm. I'm not gonna watch 15 minutes of that. No, yeah, this is a this is a four minute video, which uh, well three three minutes 98 seconds. But the vlog brothers limit themselves to four minutes, so he filled his entire allotted time with yeah. with it. So, no, that's cool. That's definitely a cool thing. Wait, did you say three minutes 98 seconds? Mm -hmm. Oh, I, th uh, I thought I thought yeah that. yeah three minutes 98 three, seconds. 98 seconds. Yes, y'all shut the fuck up. Let me <laughs> let me let me do my math, assholes. So 3.98 minutes i would i would, I would believe three, three three minutes 58 seconds jerks <laughs> i was just doing uh i was just doing excel math the other night with numbers and times and shit and trying to convert decimal hours over to time hours Jeez. and oh it was i hate my life um okay so the last thing we have on our list today before we cut into diamond club news is ai i heard about a thing during the pre-show on night attack i think it was where uh, Justin had signed up for this service to where you could chat along with this bot that would help you schedule things. And if things came up, it would reschedule and, and all this stuff for you. And it would communicate with the other person that you're trying to schedule. And it, it would basically mediate between the two, all automated. And I was like, okay, that sounds cool. Let me, I'll, I'll go sign up for that. That sounds like something I could use for one of my podcasts or whatever, you know. Let's see how that works. So I signed up and I was like, group 195, in, to to get it, which is like forever from now, you know, who cares, right? Um, and 
it's it's a it says it's it, it, X dot AI is a personal assistant who schedules meetings for you. Sounds great. Sounds awesome. Sounds like exactly what, what we could use for podcasting. Okay, cool. I sign up and then I get an email. And the email I got, and I'll, I'll quote this, says, thanks for signing up. We are thrilled and humbled by the incredible demand we've seen for our artificial intelligence meeting scheduling agent. And that's as far as I got. Because as soon as I got the response email, it's signed by a person, but I bet it's a bot. <laughs> I bet everything that I ever interact with these people is a bot. Any customer service or anything else is all going to be a bot. I am part of their experiment. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I think I would have been okay with it if it was up front. If the email said, thank you for signing up with me. How, you know, wh what, what meeting can I help you schedule? You know, signed the bot, you know? Nope. Nope, 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 nope. This is actually pair at human.x.ai. Uh, okay. Like, like, <laughs> you AI. So. I, 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 I don't know if it's just trying to fool me into thinking it's an actual human or if it's, I mean, all the signs. I mean, every sign that I would look for could be automated. There's no way for me to tell. Well, look at all the emails that you get as a response from any company that you interact with. Those are all and, I, like, and I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. This is an AI company responding to me, expecting me to to actually think this is a human. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I thought that was, that was like a little inception email, moment. Somewhere in the email, does it say "Do not respond to this this email"? This is a non monitored email address or anything like that. No, no, it does not. Respond to it and see what it says. <laughs> Ask it if it's a bot. <laughs> That's what you should do. I'm doing it right now. Right now. Yeah. Re report back next week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Actually, if you bought, you're probably going to get a response within five seconds. <laughs> Live on the air experiment. Yep. Doing it. Doing it right now. <laughs> Let's see. We'll, we'll, we'll see if we get anything. Let's we'll see if we get anything. All right. Meanwhile, we have some Diamond Club news to go to today. Yeah. What do we got? Um, so we mentioned last week that we were trying to win an award. We didn't get, we didn't win the nomination, which is cool. Um, jury won out over us, but, yep. uh, being the faithful that we are faithful party liners that we are, um, over at hat.t2t2.eu, you cruise on over there and all the diamond club shows that have been nominated are highlighted and you, you just go down the little, little sidebar on the side. Well, after you follow the instructions, of course. You go down the little sidebar on the side, and it'll actually walk you through the process of making sure all the nominations are correct as as according to the Diamond Club ticket. Okay. It's great. So we get the nominations. The nominations are open until April 30th, and then I'm sure there'll be some really awesome way to expedite your voting if you do choose to vote the Diamond Club ticket uh, when it comes right. to the podcast awards so we can uh, hat the system and have the funny hats accept all the awards this year because screw those other podcasts. Yeah, yeah, and I we're definitely going to do this. And <laughs> what's going to happen is that next year they're going to have rules against doing what we did right. this year because right. we got kind of screwed this year because we screwed the system last year. <laughs> so, yeah, it's just going to be a it's, it's like the it's like Whatever. the white it's like the white hat hackers versus the black hat hackers. It's always like a stair step mm -hmm. kind of thing. One's mm -hmm. ahead of the other. Then they jump ahead of the other, and then they jump ahead of the other, et cetera, et cetera. And that's exactly what this is going to be until they eventually say, you know what? Fuck it. No more podcast awards, and they're going to shut it down. So funny you should mention that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so this year, there is a GoFundMe for the podcast awards. A GoFundMe? A GoFundMe for the podcast awards. Okay. Um, yes, and if I can bring it up real quick, the... The uh, the quote is something along the lines of, without us reaching our goal of $25,000, this may be the last podcast awards ever. Okay. Sounds so, like a threat. So, so, so just tell me what, what, that, what, what you think about that. Sounds like a threat. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's... It, it's any... It's just like Wikipedia or uh, PBS or NPR or any of these things that say like oh you know we it's that time of year again we need to pay our bills and 
we're we're not gonna be here if we don't get money from you. Well, okay, that's kind of true, but somebody is going to bail them out. They, they have, mm-hmm. like, especially Wikipedia. They they have people that are going to pay the difference. Whatever they don't raise from the public, spoilers here, people. Whatever they don't get from donations from regular people like you and me, there's a backer out there that's going to pay the difference to keep Wikipedia in business. Um, I need to correct myself. Okay. It says, uh, we have to raise $25,000 or this will be the last podcast awards forever. And forever is capitalized. Okay. Yeah, it definitely sounds like a threat. Yeah, it is. And that's that's kind of what they... This one's a little more blatant than, like, in my example, the Wikipedia one or even the PBS one. Uh, they, they have to appeal to you. And the, their audience is obviously the people that give a shit about the podcast awards. So they're going to say, hey, if you want this thing to keep going, you need to give us money because this this will be it. So as of right now, it is sitting at $1,368 of the $25,000. And he says on the video, if you watch the video... He says that uh, um, <clears throat> it's to rebuild the podcast awards site. And he's gotten estimates anywhere from 10000 to 15000 And getting the 25000 would ensure the, the stability and capability for the next 10 years. That's what he has on there. And, of course, that's, that's by Todd Cochran, which is, you know, he hosts the, the, uh, the podcast awards. So that's, mm-hmm. that's his stated intent and... Yeah, take that for what you will. I, I I don't doubt that it costs money and everything else, but I just I I don't see. I don't know. There just there has to be a better way than raising twenty five thousand dollars or just ending the whole podcast awards thing. You know, they're already not doing a uh, last year. They did a show, uh, you know, with a convention hall in Vegas and had big crowds and everything else, and they're already not doing that this year. So, I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know what what's what's going on with that. They can't afford Chris Jericho maybe, this year. Maybe maybe this is a market that uh, that is ripe for someone to take over and run with, you know? Right. So, uh, okay, who charges $10,000 to build a web page? Yeah, that's what I was thinking, too. Well, my yeah. original comment was, you know, T2T2 and Sergeant Muffin and Tin Vet could do this and <laughs> have it hacked out and for half that and still have enough money to take a trip to Hawaii. So. In three days! <laughs> and they would have it running perfect in three days. So... Um, yeah, it, it, uh, there's, there's, there just has to be a better way. This can't be what, what, what's going on here. So there's that. And then yeah. that, that's Diamond Club news for this week. Go, go there, go to hat.t2t2.eu, follow the instructions on the left side of the right side of the screen and, uh, get your votes in. And of course you don't have to vote for all of them. If you just want to vote for one or two, that's fine. Or if you want to vote the whole ticket, it's all there. So go do what your conscience uh, tells you to do and run with it. Yeah, I'll be voting for Ringo Chicken. <laughs> yep. yep. Yeah, and we definitely need to, to vote for the jury podcast because he was our competitor in the mature category yep. that beat us out fair and square by a lot, which we kind of knew was going to happen. Right. Uh, but we, our show and jury had an understanding that whichever one won, the other was going to support them. So, mm-hmm. um, so yeah, good job, jury, and we are definitely going to support his win right um so now uh it's time it's that time man it it is that time what time is that the the time when we talk about all the places people can find us as if we are internet personalities and and people are looking which that's not the case so i'd like to start off with lucas because lucas over here has got a podcast did you know that did you know he has a podcast get out yeah you have a podcast dude yeah you do too yeah, it's the Ritual Misery podcast. We do yeah. it every week. L- week. Lucas has one called the called the uh, the the Film Zone. He's he's actually a co-host. His his co-host is a complete douchebag though. Like you should not listen to his co-host at all. It's all <laughs> Lucas, man. Like there should be a supercut where it's just Lucas talking about stuff and just cut out the co-host completely. Yeah, that would that would probably be uh, a good thing. No, uh, yeah, the, yeah the Film Zone is a is a show that Lucas and I do together. And I love that that years ago, Lucas chose the internet handle Movie Man Lucas, mm-hmm. because this is so <laughs> so fitting to do a movie. Podcast. So so what's Film Zone about in your words, Lucas? Uh, pretty much, Dad and I talk about movies that are coming out and just movie news and 
just we just talk about the newest movies and sometimes the old movies such as Temple of Doom or E.T. or whatever we want to talk about. And yeah, sometimes we talk about nerdy stuff such as like, well, what's what's Doctor Strange doing here? Like what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we, we like to go see movies in the theater. And usually when we do that, we come straight home and we record our thoughts about mm-hmm. that movie. What what is it, What's our next movie? Our next like in theater movie that we're going to do uh, tomorrow. We should be seeing jungle book the oh. live action movie. So very cool. Dude, I am so looking forward to that. Cause I, I feel like a, a, a little kid when I watch the trailers for that. And it's just, it looks <laughs> bare necessities. So, cool. yes. so, uh, so I am, I'm still stuck on episode five because you started getting ready to spoil uh, 10 Cloverfield lane. And I actually wanted to watch it before I listened to the episode. So yeah. that's where I'm watch. at. It's so good. Like I don't mind being spoiled in movies I don't want to watch, but I actually want to watch that one. So, I'd... Yep. yeah, so good, so good. That, that spoiler alert: the movie is awesome. <laughs> All right, and so it, so Lucas, where can people find you uh, on the interwebs? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Movie Man Lucas, where I talk about sometimes movies, but I most lately I've been talking about the newest Hearthstone cards that are being revealed for the new set. Cool. Yeah, but it's it's his insight into like if, if the card's gonna be valuable, what kind of deck it's gonna be good in, things like that. It's pretty cool. And they're mostly first impressions. So nice. How about you, Kent? At rm underscore del noche on Twitter. I'm I talk about random stuff mostly. But if you want to hear me talking about beer, well, you won't hear me. But if you want to read me <laughs> talking about. <laughs> Beer. Yeah, uh, just go to rabier.com and look up username Del Noche and see what I'm doing there. There you go. And, of course, you can find me at Ethan Kane. You can also follow, find the show at Ritual Misery, uh, both those on Twitter, of course. You can submit ideas or submit it, subreddit, ritualmisery.reddit.com. You can email us, <laughs> podcast at ritualmisery.com. And you can call him his voicemail, 567-69-TRMPC. That's 567-698-7672. And, uh, of course, you can find all these and more ways to support the show and links and everything else on our webpage, ritualmisery.com. Uh, special thanks to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music. And for me, for you, and for Kent and Lucas, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya. Bye. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>